1995, McFarlane Toys produced the first series of toys based on the image comic, Wetworks. Last time, we learned a brief history of the comic and took a look at the Series 2 figure, Frankenstein. This time, we are going back to Series 1 to look at their interpretation of yet another famous monster, the Vampire, here on Creed's Collection. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Creed's Collection. Today we are looking at the Vampire from the 1995 toy line, Wetworks, by McFarlane Toys. I'm sure you can already tell that it's going to be another unboxing this week, so let's start off by taking a look at the package. So right here at the top it lets you know this figure stands 7 and 3 quarter inches tall. He has a cool visor that goes on his forehead there, and over here he's got his battle axe slash spear which is pretty awesome if you ask me. He also has a loincloth, just like Frankenstein, so that's kind of a theme, I guess, with their villains. Here's a closer look at the front of the card, and as we get down to the bottom, here on the bottom front is a little bit of information about the visor and the removable leg armor, and we'll get to both of those things a little bit later. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the back of the card. Right here it says Wetwork Series 1, and here are some of the figures from the line, like Dozer and the Werewolf. Now, over here as well, there's some other series like Youngblood and Spawn that McFarlane Toys makes. And then down here at the bottom, you've got the Vampire File Card, which we will look at a little bit later. Here's a closer look at the back, and also, there are several future retrospectives hidden amongst these figures. Alright, now with that out of the way, it's time to get this guy the package so we can take a closer look at him. Get out my trusty X-Acto knife, and this time we're trying a new method. Instead of cutting the bubble itself, I saw someone slip a blade underneath this and then cut their way down the edges. It actually does pretty well, I was surprised. I didn't think this would work. I still left this edge glued down so that I could open it like a book and slip out the tray. All right, now here he is. We have his visor right here, it's fallen out. We'll go ahead and put it to the side and then his battle axe slash spear, and then of course the vampire himself. I'm just gonna take the tray real quick and put it back inside the bubble. And as you can see, when you do this cutting method, man, it looks good. This is probably how I'm gonna do it from now on. Vampires, figures of horror and legend, do indeed stalk the night in the world of Wetworks. Victims of an ancient catastrophe that they brought on themselves, the vampires now live in underground cities, biding their time. They await a call to arms, one night, the night, when they swarm forth and seize the world that they feel is rightfully theirs. And now that we know a little bit more about the vampires of the world of Wetworks, let's take a closer look. I'm sure you can tell right away that the sculpt work on the vampire is just as amazing as it was on Frankenstein. All McFarlane toys had this high level of detail that was unparalleled when they were released. McFarlane toys had taken the action figure and catapulted it into adult collectible, and the toy industry has never looked back. The muscles, the ribs, the texturing of the skin, the ears, the bones sticking out of the shoulder, it's all just so good. As we come down to the fingers here, you can see they're long and spindly with nice claws and then some amazing vein work as well. Like I said, there was nothing like this back in the day. This is just a level of detail that was unprecedented. Which continues right on down to these boots, which I find amazing looking. These little plates on the side here can pop off like we established earlier. And underneath, it's got this really cool mechanical look. The only thing I could come up with is maybe there for jumping higher and landing, but I don't know. Anyway, let's pop one of them off and take a look. There on the back, it appears to be a hydraulic piston, which is why I feel like they're for jumping. Let's go ahead and take off the other side there, and there's a better look at it without any coverings. And here he is with all the coverings removed. I don't understand the point of this other than it's just really awesome, and the little boy in me always liked to have pieces that you could pop on and off of a figure. Here's a close-up of one of the coverings. They're all identical. And here on the inside, you can see there's two pegs, and that's how you pop it on to the outside of the leg. These two holes here, you just take it like so and easily snap it right into place. So simple, yet so cool. 
As we come around to the back of the figure, I just want to point out the real hair on his head, which I have yet to mention. It is a very simple thing, yet it elevates this figure nonetheless. Now it's time to look at the accessories included with Vampire. Here is his staff slash battle axe thing. It's pretty amazing. I love the giant blade here, and this piece is what holds onto his hand. That's how he actually grasps it. But I noticed something here on the other end. It's real strange, right here. Does this look familiar to you? If you said Voltron's blazing sword, you would be correct. On the left is the end of the spear for Vampire, and on the right is the end of the blazing sword for the Voltron Lion Force. I think the designer decided to hide a little 1980s easter egg in this toy. Anyway, back to how he holds it. As you can see, you take the piece and you kind of slide it up into the web of his hand like that, and it just kind of stays there all by itself. Now here's a better look at his head visor. It's made out of a really flexible rubber, so it's very easy to get over his ears and get onto his head. I think that like the boots, this piece really elevates the look of the figure. Not really sure what it's supposed to be doing other than looking super cool. Now we're going to take a look at Vampire's articulation. Here at the knee, he has a 90 degree bend, which is pretty nice. And then here at the hips, there's also a joint, but it really doesn't have a lot of movement, unfortunately. As you can see, maybe 15 degrees. Here at the shoulders, though, you got a full 360 movement if you like. And here at the wrists, you have a swivel point, and that's on both hands. And I really like swivel points. Pretty cool. Now, sadly, there is no swivel point at the waist and the head I could not get to move. So that covers all of Vampire's articulation. Here's a look at Vampire's file card. If you'd like to read it, pause now. Before we move on, I do want to point out that there were two variants of the Vampire figure. Here's one with green skin and a blue outfit. And here's one with really dark green skin and a black outfit. Since these are generic army building figures, kind of like stormtroopers, the different color variants really help mix it up. Now we're going to take a look at the copyright information on Vampire. On the back of one leg you can see, Made in China, and on the back of the other leg we have, 1995, McFarland Toys. And now for our He-Man size comparison. At 7 and 3 quarter inches, Vampire towers over He-Man. But He-Man's just looking at him and trying to figure out why he's so skinny. He-Man definitely thinks Vampire needs to get something to eat. Hello there, friend. Why so skinny? I'm just hungry. I haven't eaten in 25 years. I've been trapped in a box. Oh, well then you should eat a big sandwich. They're really quite filling. I drink blood. What did you just say? I said one sandwich, please. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my toy retrospective for Vampire from the 1995 toy line Wetworks by McFarlane Toys. I'm sure it's probably driving some people crazy that I'm opening up these old toys, but you know, I've been staring at them for so long and I just kind of want to get them out and actually play with them. And hopefully soon he'll be on display with Frankenstein. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you have any thoughts, please leave a comment. I love reading and responding to them. And while you're at it, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it and it would help my channel grow. I do a retrospective on a toy from my vintage collection every Wednesday. So I hope to see you next week and every week after here on Creed's Collection.